Good morning. Good morning. Oh, God bless you all. So happy to be here. So grateful to be here. Yep. All right. We're going to start with a song. You know what? God knows my name. God knows our name. you today to thank you, to say we love you, we're grateful for life, for the many, many blessings that you bestow upon us, for your authority over our, our world and our lives, and for grace, for forgiveness for the things we don't do well. We thank you for these things, precious Jesus, for your love for us and for the time Set aside each Sunday for us to worship you and to love you back. We pray once again the prayer that you taught the disciples. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is, is the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory, and the glory forever, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. 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 John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he wasn't following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be soon able afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will no, by no means lose their reward. We mustn't be overly 
denominational in our opinions. Whomever is not against us is for us. I see a lot of preachers that I don't pay a lot of mind to, but if they're reaching one person, they're doing something for God. Anyway, my best teachers were a Presbyterian, a Pentecostal, a Lutheran, a Baptist, a Methodist, a Jewish woman, and all of you. So um, we don't play favorites on denominationalism. <clears throat> Second part, if any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. Pretty serious stuff. Misleading or harming a child regarding Christ or misleading an uninformed person regarding the Lord won't be tolerated by God. He goes on to say, if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. He doesn't mean for you to cut your hand off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. Don't do that, Denise. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where the worm never dies and fire is never quenched. Now that sounds crazy. And obviously we know Jesus, so we know he didn't mean for us to do those things. Here it is. Hand, foot, or eye. Whatever weakness in the flesh draws us away from Jesus and makes us sin, attend to it. <laughs> if it's your hand, stop touching stuff you shouldn't. If it's your foot, stop going places you shouldn't. If it's your eye, stop looking at what you shouldn't. There you are. Yeah. And the third part, for everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have, you, have salt in yourself and be at peace with one another. That's a tough one too. Fire purifies and salt preserves from corruption. Better that we endure a little bit of self-denial in this life or a lot of self-denial if that's what it takes than a future of eternal torment. That's what God's talking about. And salt, if it loses its saltiness, in other words, if we just get cavalier about our waywardness, you know, if we just get cavalier about it, then we've lost our own saltiness. That is the gospel. Is that a little bit helpful? Okay, good. Right standing with God is the big deal. And prayer can get us there and keep us there. That's the overriding theme for today. Right standing with God is the big deal. And prayer can get us there and keep us there. A lot of people say, I believe in God. Oh, good. Are you living for him in any kind of way? I don't know. Well, do you think about him every day? Well, I don't have to, do I? No, you don't have to. He gave you free choice. But you get what I'm saying? I believe in Ford. and I, uh, We own one, I think. I believe in Chevy. I own one of those. I believe in Buick. <laughs> it doesn't mean that I've given my heart to them. So right standing with God is the big deal. And I'm preaching to the choir here. This I think we overthink things sometimes. Most people do anyway, and it's easy to do. James 5 is our next reading. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of the faithful will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. You don't suppose he was praying the first part of this year, do you, Beth? We didn't get much rain. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave its rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any of you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. That's 186 words, 
31 verbs and 48 nouns, all in three paragraphs and two points. First, in three small paragraphs, James uses the word prayer six times. What do you think he's getting at? Second, he qualifies the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Any thoughts? Am I overthinking this? <laughs> the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. We carve out a path of righteousness every minute of the day. We make decisions every second, every minute. What will I think about? What will I concentrate on? What will I allow in my mind and in my heart and my spirit? The prayer of the righteous, and that is the pure of heart, seeking after God, hoping to please Him, and making the mistakes that we will make as humans. James says, pray, 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 pray. And that is the reading from James 5. Am I overthinking this? Probably not. Okay. The responsive reading, we will read the responsive reading here. We can stand for this. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them you also your servant is also your, by them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping with them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sin. Keep me from presumptuous sin. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, be acceptable in, in your sight. sight. O oh Lord, Lord, my strength and my, and my Redeemer. Redeemer. Please be seated. Verse 7, the teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord gives sure wisdom to the simple. God loves everyone. He knows everything and is perfect, so his words to us always comfort. They revive our mind, our heart, our emotions. Remember Paul said, pray without ceasing. Well, that one gave me a lot of questions, well, you know. I remember a guy that would be at McDonald's talking to himself, you know, real you know, out loud. You know, well, you're talking about a condor about this size. You know, I mean, he, and nobody wanted to go near him because they were afraid. How am I going to pray all day long without people looking at me like, stay away from him? That's not what he meant. Not the out loud part anyway. Well, here's the thing. The more I express gratitude for Jesus, the more I have the spirit of joy. And the more... Every encounter in my day, in the day of the life of Mark, is blessed. It goes the way God would have it. This isn't the picture of a shrinking violet afraid of misstepping or of outcomes, but rather of a peaceful spirit having a perfect enough day. Psalm 16 says, in his presence is the fullness of joy. Verse 8, God's statutes are just, fair that is, and rejoice the heart. His commandments are clear, giving light to the eyes. God is vast and mysterious, but he never talks over our heads. One pastor put it like this. Jesus never quoted scripture to someone who wouldn't understand it. His commands are actually few. We know we are loved when someone in charge cares enough to set clear boundaries with consequences. God's commands do just that, and kids and adults both flourish. I have a building full of people who didn't get that lesson growing up. God's wisdom from above is a comfort and a light in the eyes of his followers. Verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. His judgments are true to his nature. He's righteous. Proverbs 9 also says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, that one bothered me too when I first read it. This is not... 
The fear of heights, the fear of drowning, the fear of bungee jumping. I won't be doing that. It is the full knowledge of God and his authority over me. That's what he's talking about. And the consequence of separation from him, even hell. That is the beginning of wisdom. The devil would have you be afraid of God. God would have you be leery or, or be conscious of hell. Only the pure in heart and motive will live in heaven forever. All others will live forever in an endless misery, fully conscious of every moment. And hell was not intended for you or me, but we can choose to go there. God wishes that not one would be lost and that not one would choose eternal hell over eternal heaven. But he doesn't want us to ever fear him. My friend Corey had a vision of God. He was a wonderful, faithful man, still is. And I've known him almost 30 years. Corey had a vision one night in his sleep. He found himself in a place that was endless, dreadful, dark, full of people, a sea of people in there all moaning, all miserable, and all conscious of their misery. And there was an endlessness to it an eternal feeling, nothing is going to change. Picture that, an endless cavern, dark, full of moaning people. And as he observed this, a voice spoke that was probably able to be heard by everybody. And it said, there is one among us who is not among us. And the spirit rose up in his heart and he said, Lord, that has to be me. And that's when he woke up. That's a picture of, of hell, of a hell that you and I don't want to have any part of. God's ways are more to be desired than gold. They are sweeter than a honeycomb. The sweetest relation you have in this life with dad, mom, husband, wife, grandma, grandpa is a reflection of the closeness that God feels for us and the love he wants us to experience with him. He loves you more than you will ever love him back in this life. But don't let that stop you from trying. Verse 12. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Some things seem so normal or approvable when in fact they're not. I needed that reminder from James recently. The tongue is a fire. I needed to stop deriding politicians that are failing us. I wasn't helping God by disparaging other humans with a soul, a soul that God cares about. So this revelation drew me closer to the Lord, but it took him showing me, and he did so ever, ever so gently. He didn't punish me. He just showed me. We're often better at noticing a fault in others, aren't we, than we are in ourselves. And here's the psych, Psychology 101 lesson for today, the junk that annoys us in someone else is often a reflection of our own. Amen? amen? Oh, it's a big amen. I'm certainly capable of those and because that's exactly how evil ensnares us. One little temptation at a time. Verse 13. Above all, keep from presumptuous, careless or cavalier or arrogant sins. Let them not get dominance or power over me because I'm certainly capable of them because that's exactly how evil ensnares us. One little temptation at a time, then another and another, until we lose our resolve and we ignore the lover of our soul. Yeah, I believe in Chevy. I believe in Ford. No place for that in our lives. Verse 14, Guard me, O Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. I want to please the Lord Jesus because I love Him. And I love Him because He first loved me. Sins and all. Pray with me, please. Lord, we're grateful for these words today. Your scriptures that say so much more than what the eye can pull off of a piece of paper. I thank you for your love for us, Lord God of a piece of paper. I thank you for your love for us, Lord God. 
for your tenderness in your dealings with us. And I thank you for the boundaries that you set for us, Lord God, that speak to our hearts and that guide us. Bless us in all these things, Lord Jesus. Bless all who came here today. And we thank you for these things, precious Lord. Amen. One more song, please. Five thirty two. Five thirty two? Yes. Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Amen. Entrusted us with so many babies. Yep, go.
Song number three, four, six.